I welcome you all to the session of thermal engineering basic and applied and today we shall discuss about the characteristics of radiative radiant and convective superheaters. And finally, we shall discuss about the important issue that is the steam temperature control. So, if we try to recall in the last class, we have discussed about the classification of superheaters and we have seen that the superheaters can be classified principally based on the modes of heat transfer into two subclasses. What are those? One is the convective superheater, other, other one other another one is the radiant superheater. So, convective superheater and radiant superheater from the name itself we can understand that the modes of heat transfer rather heat transfer is you know convective heat transfer is dominating for the convective superheater and the radiative mode of heat transfer is the dominating mode for the radiant heat, you know superheaters. And further we also could you know classify the superheaters based on the flow configuration and geometrical configuration. So, just to recall exactly what we have discussed in the last class, if we write superheaters So, one is convective superheater, another one is the radiant superheater. And this classification that we have discussed is based on the modes of heat transfer. So, this is based on modes of heat transfer. Whether it is a convective superheater or radiant superheater, this particular class or the radiant superheater, this class of superheaters can also be you know sub uh, classified depending on the flow configuration and the geometrical configuration. See I mean here we can now see this convective, this particular group or class in which the dominating mode of heat transfer is the convective heat transfer. So, so long as the convective heat transfer is there we can see that the fluid flow will play an important role. So, naturally the flow configuration can also be taken into account while classifying the convective superheater. And that is why this particular class of superheater can be again classified into two different categories depending on the flow configuration. So, this is flow configuration. and this is so 
So, this particular classification is based on the direction of flow. So, that is parallel flow and counter flow that we have discussed in the last class. Now, so basically uh, it is parallel flow or counter flow. So, basically there are two streams, one is the stream, another stream is the flue gas. If these two streams are allowed to pass in the same direction that is parallel flow, in other case if stream is allowed to pass in the direction which is opposite to the direction of the flue gas or you know combustion products, then it is counter flow. So, you can understand this counter flow and parallel flow this particular classification is you know very very important for the for this particular class that is convective superheated. But still why I am discussing this particular issue because if when you are talking about flow configuration it is not a case that there is no flow for the flow of the stream when we are talking about radiant superheater. Even for the radiant superheater, there is a flow of stream through the superheater, but in that case, there is no flow of con you know the combustion product flow is not that much important because radiative radi radiative mode of heat transfer is the dominating one because of the superheaters are placed in a zone which is very close to the combustion chamber of the boiler and it is because of this you know uh, position uh, it is because of the position of the superheaters uh, this this the radiative mode plays an important role. So, to 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 you know clarify this particular issue we are uh, I have discussed this. So, when you are talking about flow configuration that means we are indirectly trying to understand that the performance of the convective superheaters are based on the arrangement of the flow because these two streams that is the stream of combustion gases and stream of steam these two streams will be allowed to pass through the superheater and while they are passing they will exchange heat between these two streams and I mean they will exchange heat uh, each other and uh, uh, we will be getting superheated steam. Now, next one is the geometrical configuration. What is geometrical configuration? We have discussed this is this is applicable to both the cases whether it is convective superheater or radiant superheater. So, this is vertical superheaters or horizontal. That means, whether we are placing the superheater in the horizontal, horizontal plane or vertical plane depending on this particular you know basis we can keep a particular superheater whether it is convective or radiant into these two sub classes that is vertical you know superheater or horizontal superheater. So, these aspects we have discussed in the last class. What we could understand from the discussion we had in the last class is that you know superheaters are basically very very important element for the efficient operation of the boiler. Though they are not the mandatory components, but still these components are attached to the boiler to have the maximum performance or best performance of the boiler. The reason is steam that we are getting in a boiler that is either uh, you know saturated steam or if even if it is dry saturated if we have you know that. Uh, we have discussed in the context of uh, Babcock Wilcox boiler that we will be having dry pipe. So, whether it is a saturated steam or dry saturated steam to increase the performance of this cycle also to have you know high quality not high quality, but not to have poor quality steam at the exit of the turbine, steam which will be taken to the turbine should be superheated from the boiler. 
and that is why the steam which is being produced in the boiler will be taken through the superheaters whether it is a convective or radiant essentially to increase the temperature of the steam. Now, today we shall be discussing about the you know uh, characteristics of the convective and radiant superheaters. So, let us write Okay. So, why it is important to be studied in this course? Because you know that uh, steam temperature should be increased, only the objective is to increase the steam temperature before it leaves from the boiler. There are two reasons, one is if we do not get the superheated steam at the exit of the boiler, the performance of the cycle should be compromised. Not only that, the quality of steam at the exit of the turbine, so steam will be taken to the turbine, it will be allowed to flow, while it is flowing through the turbine, uh, it does work on the rotating part of the turbine, that is the turbine runner and finally, steam comes out from the turbine and taken to the condenser. So, when steam is coming out from the turbine, attention should be rather whoever is designing the system, he or she must be careful to check whether quality of the steam at the exit of the turbine is less or high. So, if the quality falls below a threshold value, then the moisture content of steam will try to you know create several other problems that we have discussed and that is very much uh, problematic considering the you know uh, smooth as well as uh, up, you know uh, cyclic operation of the turbine for a long time. So, now uh, so, when we are talking about characteristics that means, we can understand when we are take, taking steam through the superheater, it temperature will increase, but whether the increase in temperature is linear with the boiler load or if it is not linear, whether the temperature at the exit of the superheater will be increasing or it will be decreasing with increasing or decreasing the load of the boiler. So, that aspect is very important. Superheaters will always run at the you know design condition. Sometimes depending on the requirement, we may have to go uh, several you know uh, points where the mass flow rate of steam from the boiler should be higher the design value. Sometimes we also have to consider the mass flow rate of steam through the boiler which is lesser than the design value. So, that means, it is not always possible to run the boiler at its design condition. Now, considering this aspect, if the steam flow, you know, steam flow rate through the boiler increases, then what would be the performance of the superheater? Because our entire objective is to get superheated steam from the turbine exit with increasing steam flow rate, if the performance of the superheaters are not at par with their design condition, then what will be the consequence. So, now let us look at what would be the characteristics of the convective superheaters. So, first if we consider the convective superheater. So, I have already introduced one you know terminology 
that is boiler load. So, what is boiler load? Let us discuss about what is boiler load. So, boiler load is you know, so is very important. This is the steam generation rate. in case of a boiler. That means, if you would like to have high boiler load that means, boiler is loaded. That means, we are trying to have maximum steam generation from the boiler. So, if the boiler is designed to produce certain amount of steam, sometimes we may have to go of design condition. So, we may have to run the boiler at its off design condition. That means, the steam generation rate which is expected from the boiler should be increased that is depending on the requirement. So, if the boiler load increases what would be the characteristics of the convective superheater? You know you have studied. So, steam generation rate in case of a boiler. So, if demand increases. So, now if demand increases demand of what power definitely. So, from the power plant if demand increases what we need to do? We need to have more amount of steam generation. So, if demand increases then the its effect would be mass flow rate, mass flow rate of both fuel flue gas and steam m dot f comma s. So, mass flow rate of both flue gas and steam. So, m dot f equal to mass flow rate of flue gas or combustion product and m dot s equal to mass flow rate of steam. That means, we need to have high mass flow rate high steam generation inside the boiler. So, m dot s will increase if you need to have higher amount of m dot s we need to have high you know higher amount of we need to circulate higher amount of feed water and if we need to have conversion of that higher amount of you know feed water into the steam we should have higher amount of high mass flow rate of the flue gas. So, now question is if m dot f is increasing and m dot s is increasing I can write mass flow rate will increase m dot what would be the consequence. See we have studied that if m dot flue gas increases and m dot steam. So, m dot flue gas needs to be increased to have higher amount of m dot s. If m dot f increases the convective heat transfer coefficient will increase and what will happen you know that the temperature of steam at the outlet of the superheater will be increased that you have studied in the uh, heat transfer course when you have this when you have studied about heat exchanger. So, see question is if we consider say this is the superheater and if we place the say this is the parallel flow superheater and if we consider that this is the m dot f right and this is m dot s. So, basically you can understand that uh, to have to meet the demand as needed by the system we should have higher amount of m dot s mass flow rate of steam to get as I told 
we should supply higher amount of feed water. Naturally, the flow rate of flue gas or combustion product should be increased. So, we need to increase the combustion rate. So, when this m dot f is increasing, the convective heat transfer coefficient will increase and that will eventually result in the higher temperature of the steam at the exit of the superheater. So, this is very important. So, I am writing. So, higher m dot f will increase the you know higher heat transfer coefficient. right and finally the effect would be steam temperature at the outlet of convective superheater will be more. So, that is what we can understand. So, the effect is if demand increases then to meet the demand we should increase mass flow rate of steam because demand is nothing but higher m dot s. To get it we should supply more amount of m dot f. The flue gas flow rate will increase that will result in higher heat transfer coefficient effectively it will increase the steam temperature at, at the exit of the superheater. So, this is the important consequence right. So, this is the convective superheater characteristics. What about radiative superheater? So, now if we talk about radiant superheater. For the radiant superheater, you know, so basically radiant superheaters are placed in a zone which is very close to the combustion chamber. Now, radiant superheater characteristics that means that radiation effect comes from flue gas. Okay but the radiant tubes are of same size right. So, comes from flue gas or flame right. Flame temperature is same we are increasing the mass flow rate of flue gas but that does not indicate that the flame temperature will increase. Flame temperature is same, radiation effect is coming from the flue gas or flame, flame temperature is remaining same. Moreover, radiant tubes so as I told today that whether it is radiant superheater or convective superheater, steam will be allowed to flow through the radiant tubes. So, radiant tube size is also remaining same, this everything is remaining same, but we are increasing the load demand. Increasing demand m, m dot f will increase, but the flame temperature is remaining same, radiant tube size is remaining same. So, you have studied in heat transfer course that if the size is remaining same that means view factor is remaining same. View factor or safe factor is remaining same. So, question is if the view factor is remaining same then flame temperature is remaining same. So, it is because so it is because of this two reason 
रेडियन ट्यूब्स गेट कॉन्स्टेंट अमाउंट ऑफ टेम्परेचर कॉन्स्टेंट अमाउंट ऑफ हीट राइट सो ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड वी हैव अंडरस्टूड दैट रेडिएशन इफेक्ट विल कम फ्रॉम फ्लेम और फ्लू गैस फ्लेम टेम्परेचर इज रिमेनिंग सेम मे बी वी हैव इंक्रीज द मास फ्लेट ऑफ फ्लू गैस बट दैट डजन इंडिकेट द फ्लेम टेम्परेचर इज इंक्रीज फ्लेम टेम्परेचर इज रिमेनिंग सेम ऑन द टॉप ऑफ दैट रेडियन ट्यूब्स हुई आर यूज ऑलरेडी दे आर द साइज ऑफ द रेडियन ट्यूब is also same so the view factor or shape factor will be the same now if we even place that radiant superheater for a case where demand has increased but the radiant tubes will get constant amount of heat but we have already discussed in the previous in the context of the convective superheater if demand increases that is also true because you know that these superheaters are placed in the boiler so steam should be allowed to pass through convective separator and then radi radiant separator or maybe uh, reverse is true but question is radiant tubes will be getting constant amount of heat if the m dot s increases what would be the consequence so when m dot s increases to meet the increasing demand right the steam temperature at the exit of radiant superheater will decrease so this is very important steam temperature will de decrease so what we have understood we have understood that if demand increases steam temperature increases when it is passing through the convective superheater from the discussion we have just now we have understood that if demand increases steam temperature will decrease when it is passing through the radiant superheater so these are the characteristic of the convective and radiant superheater so it is because of this reason you know what we have understood that if steam is passing so the same boiler same you know tubes only m dot s has increased to meet the demand higher demand and to get higher m dot s m dot f will increase because of this increase in both m dot s and m dot f the temperature of steam at the exit of the convective superheater will increase that we have discussed but since the view factor is remaining same and flame temperature is also remaining same the steam temperature at the exit of the radiant superheater will decrease so you know i mean our objective is to get a fixed temperature at the exit of the superheater so when steam is passing through the convective superheater it its temperature decreases increases but when passing through the radiant superheater its temperature decreases so question is in the entire purpose of placing the superheater was to get high temp in a superheated steam it is because of this reason you know because of the different characteristics of these two different superheaters the convective and radiant superheaters are placed in series so one question should be why the convective superheater i am writing cs and radiant superheater rs are connected
say superheaters are connected in series. So, this is the question, right? Answer is same because if I try to explain it now, let us draw it. So, if we try to draw the load versus temperature curve. So, this is load. So, you can see this load is nothing but you know steam generation rate. boiler and this is the T out. So, that is the temperature superheated superheated outlet temperature superheater outlet temperature. So, if we increase the load what we have seen that so, this is the convective superheater. So, this is C s and this is the radiant superheater, right. So, with increasing load, temperature of steam will decrease for the radiant superheater, but if we increase the load, for the convective superheater temperature of steam will increase. So, these two are contradicting each other considering the fact that the sole objective of placing superheater is to increase the steam temperature. So, now it is because of this reason these two are connected in series because if we do not provide the convex if we do not provide radiant superheater you know, but our objective is to get or to maintain the constant temperature of steam at the exit of the superheater at the, at the exit of the boiler attributed primarily to the metallurgical consideration of the turbine blades. So, the steam temperature should not be excessively high otherwise turbine blade material will fail, thermal crack will be generated and it is not desirable one. So, to maintain a constant temperature at the exit of the boiler, these two superheaters are placed in series. The underlying reason is in one case steam temperature increases if, in, if we increase the load, in another case steam temperature decreases if we increase the load. So, this is the you know answer. So, what you have understood now you know that uh, the sole purpose of placing the superheaters is to get superheated steam that we have understood. Now, from, from today's discussion we have understood that the characteristics are not same. In one case steam temperature will increase of course, if we increase the load and this is not impractical. The most realistic case is that the load should increase depending on the demand of the system. So, whenever a boiler is placed in a power plant, it is very unlikely that the boiler will operate always at the design condition. Boiler needs to operate at its off design condition very often. So, the practical situation is that load will increase. If load increases, then it is because of this different characteristics of these two different types of separators these two superheaters are placed in series only to ensure that the steam temperature at the exit of the boiler should be constant. Now, question is you know we, we all are discussing about mechanical components and mechanical devices and mechanical components when they will be in use after a long time they will start malfunctioning and that too you know even after having the proper design or proper placing of these two superheaters, it may not be possible to get the temperature of steam which is desirable, which is most desirable. That means, even if we place these two superheaters in series, nobody can you know ascertain that 
the temperature of steam at the exit of the boiler should be one which is suitable for the turbine blade. So, maybe it, you know steam temperature will be higher than the temperature which the turbine blade can withstand. So, considering this, this particular aspect is very important that is called steam temperature control. So, this is kind of you know uh, very contradicting we have generated steam then only to have only to increase the temperature of steam we had to pass the steam through the superheaters and placing superheaters again is not a an easy task and then we also had to place superheaters in series. But what we have understood that even after having proper placing of the superheaters, proper arrangement of the superheater, superheaters, it is not possible to get the actual temperature of steam which is which the turbine blade can withstand. So, that means, we are trying to increase the temperature of steam after its generation inside the boiler and that is why we are passing through the superheaters. And finally, we can see that even after passing through the superheater, its temperature may become so high that again we need to have it uh, have a control over its temperature. So, that is very uh, I think is contradicting. So, in one so till now we have understood that we need to increase the temperature of steam because if we do not increase this steam temperature, performance will deteriorate. But now we can understand that when we are trying to increase the steam temperature we may not have enough control to increase the steam temperature up to the desirable limit. Sometimes the temperature may go beyond the desirable limit and that is why you need to have control of the steam temperature because otherwise turbine blade material will turbine blade will fail. So, steam temperature control is essentially uh, it is let me write here the temperature of superheated steam is controlled controlled by two methods so superheated steam which are which is produced that steam should be taken through again some you know uh, uh, mechanical arrangements essentially to have a control of its temperature before it enters into the turbine. And this is done by two methods one is known as steam control another one is known as gas control. In this particular course, I shall briefly discuss about the steam control method. So, now question is temperature of superheated steam is controlled by the by these two methods steam control and gas control. If it is steam control then definitely temperature of the superheated steam will be controlled by the steam control right. So, that means, let me write here following this in the steam control method. Uh, superheated steam temperature is controlled by you know uh, steam 
steam uh, steam so in the steam control method the superheated te steam temperature is controlled by steam so what is what 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 is the you know process let us briefly look at look into it so you know that uh, steam control method superheated steam its temperature should be controlled. To be precise the temperature of the superheated steam should be reduced to some extent which is which a tur the turbine blade can tolerate. So, the steam control method you know what is done superheated steam from the boiler at the superheated. So, we are getting superheated steam from the boiler precisely at the outlet from the superheaters. Then this let us do in this block diagram. Then what is done? Right? We are getting spraying condensed steam condensate is spread right on the superheated steam. So, if we spray the condensate what will happen? Temperature of superheated steam will reduce. So, this is the idea of the steam control method, right. So, we are getting superheated steam, we are trying to condense it, we are trying to spray the condensate on the superheated steam essentially to reduce its temperature. So, this is the method. What we can understand from this block diagram? So, this is the method which is known as direct method. This is direct contact type, right. But we also can discuss. I mean since it is a di it is the direct contact type that means condensate is spread directly to the superheated steam and it, it reduces the temperature. The sole objective is to get the steam temperature which will be now taken to the turbine and the turbine blade can safely withstand that temperature. But again we may have indirect contact type because we have discussed in the in, in the in the in the context of regenerative cycle that uh, open type feed water heater and closed type feed water heater. So, in the open type feed water heater the steam which is uh, the bleeding steam is now taken to the uh, one taken to one chamber and in that chamber you know the feed water is mixed with the uh, steam which is extracted and these two steams mixed together and we are get we are increasing the uh, feed water temperature. But in case of the closed type feed water heater, the you know feed water is allowed to pass through the tube and the extracted stream is allowed to spray over the tube. And while it is uh, you know uh, passing over the tube, it release uh, the steam releases heat and that heat is taken by the uh, feed water and feed water temperature increases. So, this is the closed type feed water heater. Similar to that also here till now we have discussed about direct type, but let us discuss about indirect type steam control method. So, steam control method is 
this is called indirect type. See now question is why not to look at the use of that temperature to increase the temperature of feed water, because essentially we have tried our best to take heat from the flue gas to increase the superheated steam. So, when if we need to reduce the temperature of superheated steam to make it suitable for the turbine blade material, why not to explore, why not to utilize that heat to increase the temperature of feed water which is which will be circulated to the boiler. So, in the indirect type uh, you know what is done. So, suppose uh, that steam is coming from, so this is superheated steam in and this is superheated steam out. We also can have, so this is a I. So, this is the direction we can have similarly you know that feed water in feed water out. So, this is the direction of feed water. So, this is feed water in this is feed water out. So, this is you know uh, feed water direction. So, while these two streams are coming that means, we are trying to utilize the we are trying to reduce the temperature of superheated steam and that temperature should be taken by the feed water. So, that means, when feed water is passing through this coil that feed water will be in you know these two are basically you know kind of heat exchanger like economizer that we have discussed because the economizer if we can recall the objective was to increase the temperature of feed water using the flue gas. So, the combustion product before it leaves from the boiler that combustion product is taken through the coil and you know uh, I mean the con you know the, co the combustion product is taken through the uh, feed water is taken through the pipe and the combustion product is allowed to pass over the pipe. So, we can extract some amount of you know heat from the you know combustion product which otherwise will be leaving from the boiler to increase the temperature of the feed water. The similar concept is applied here that while feed water is passing it is better to take that you know that uh, superheated steam will be coming and I mean that that this two will be close to each other while passing and when feed water line is passing we may allow steam to pass over the feed water line and while doing this the feed water itself will try to reduce the temperature of steam by taking some hot amount of temperature heat. So, feed water will take some hot amount of heat from the flowing steam which in turn will reduce the temperature of superheated steam and that will serve the, serve, the, serve the purpose. So, this is indirect type steam control method. Okay. So, this is the concept, the concept is to increase the temperature of feed water using the superheated steam and the even result will be the temperature of the superheated steam will decrease. Right? So, this is the indirect type. Now, let me briefly discuss here that whether it is a direct contact type or indirect contact type, we have seen that we have taken steam after its generation in the boiler through the superheater. Now, to, to when we had taken steam through superheater to increase the temperature. So, we have tried to superheat the steam, but now 
at the exit of the boiler that is at the exit from the superheater again we need to reduce its temperature because of several reason that we have discussed. Now, if we need to reduce the temperature this is called as de superheated. So, whether it is a direct contact type or indirect contact type this I know this particular process is conducted in a system or device that is called de superheater or attemperator. So, the steam control method the steam control method is done by the device called as the D superheater. That means, we had superheated now we have we are trying to de superheat. So, de superheated or attemperated. Okay. So, this is attemperated. So, finally, I will take another 2 3 minutes to see the block diagram. So, uh, let us show the block diagram as I told that these two superheaters are connected in series. Through the block diagram we can show right. So, this is case 1. Right. So, these are the junction, junction 1, junction 2, junction 3. So, this is convective superheater, this is radiant superheater and this is attemperator or d superheater. So, this is D superheater or attemperator. And finally, so this is the sensor to measure the temperature, because this is the sensor which will measure the temperature at the exit of the attemperator to make sure that the temperature of stream is suitable for the turbine blade material and that is you know uh, finally, st uh, st steam is going. So, this is case 1 what we can understand this convective superheater and the radiative radiant superheater these two superheaters are placed in series. So, this is uh, convective superheater and this is radiant superheater. Now, case 2 I am discussing say this is the junction 1, this is convective superheater. So, this is junction 1 and then we are having attemperator. So, then we are having attemperator, then another junction. So, this is junction 3 and finally, we will be having the sensor and steam will go out. So, this is a radiant superheater, this is convective superheater. So, this is junction 2. So, this is D superheater. Okay. So, now question is what we can see from these two particular you know uh, configurations is that 
in the first or two in both the cases superheaters are placed in series there is no doubt about it. But in case of the first one you know that junction 3 is at high temperature because uh, here I mean steam is first going through the convective superheater then its temperature is controlled and then finally, going to the radiant superheater and this is sensor and finally, it is going out. Okay. So, now advantage of scheme 2 is that at junction 3 for case 1 temperature is very high, but at junction 3 for case 2 is temperature is not that much high. So, this is the advantage of case 2. So, whether depending on the requirement the arrangement can be either uh, case 1 or case 2 in both the cases the superheaters are placed in series and we also can see the you know d superheater in the circuit and the function of the d superheater is to reduce the temperature if we try to summarize today's class we have discussed about the uh, we have you know recalled the classification of superheaters and then finally, we have discussed about the characteristic of both the convective and radiant superheaters. Finally, we have seen that temperature at, at the exit of the superheaters are, are very you know, temperature at the exit of the superheaters is very high and that temperature is not suitable for the turbine blade material accounting for that aspect we have also discussed about another one device in which steam temperature is controlled and that steam temperature is controlled by the device which is known as which is known as d superheater or attemperator and in this device steam temperature can be controlled either by using a direct method or by the indirect method we have discussed all these processes as well and finally through the circuit diagram we have seen the placing of the superheaters along with the d superheater in the boiler. So, with this I stop here today and we shall continue our discussion in the next class. Thank you.